Hey, everybody. Guess what? Anna Kasparian has come clean with Kyle Rittenhouse and a number of other events. Complete turnaround. Well, maybe not exactly, but I will say her new take on things is rather refreshing. She's here on Stitch and Adams. I don't know much about these dudes. I know they have a very popular YouTube channel. Uh, not that I'm bitter about it. But at any rate, she's on this show, and they're going to talk to her about Kyle Rittenhouse. And a lot of the statements she's going to make are really, really surprising. Let's go. Oh, and by the way, I've turned off my video camera because we've already got three people on the screen. I figured, eh, I don't want to put more in. I figured also maybe you want to see some of the commentary that's scrolling by on the right. You were talking about earlier, and one of the things that we always commended you on was, you know, when you publicly came out and you said that you were wrong about the, the Rittenhouse video, which, I mean, most people, when they make a mistake, they just try to hide it or they try to shift blame. You know, Jimmy Dore very, you know, famously shifted blame to his producer. And I thought it was really commendable that you came out and you're like, no, 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 I got this wrong. And you were mm -hmm. trying to, trying to show, not just do this for, like for your sake, but to say, like, listen, audience, you know, you need to understand that this is the story. And, and you know, I don't want you guys to have the wrong information. Yeah, there was, look, I, the one... I guess through line you'll notice in the various things that we're going to talk about in this conversation is that it just become more it just became abundantly clear to me that where I was getting my information and I'm not just talking about like you know independent lefty outlets I'm talking about like legacy media outlets right mm -hmm. a lot of them it's not that they report misinformation it's that they omit details of the story that right. would, you know, maybe the, de the additional details of the story don't change your mind at all, right? But it's not up to them to decide that. Like, we should know every detail. I think the Amy Cooper story is another example. You know, I, it was fairly recently I came across uh, Camille Foster's very in-depth investigation into that story, and there were so many details of that story that were intentionally omitted or left out of the legacy media reporting of it, and that painted a picture in my mind and in the minds of many others that, you know, there's, there's no justification for the way that she was you know, panicking when she was on the phone with the 911 dispatcher, right? But then you get this, then you find out, based on what Camille Foster had um, found out and reported, was that like, she didn't have good cell reception. So the person on the other end of um, that conversation couldn't hear her. She was panicking because she genuinely thought that she was at risk after, here's another thing that was omitted in a lot of the reports, after she was literally threatened by the bird watcher, right? Who said, you know, if you're gonna do what you want, I'm gonna do what I want and you're not gonna like it. And then he proceeds to try to lure her dog to him. And listen, yeah, yeah. you might still, you might still, and keep in mind, though, um, it's one thing to come clean on the whole Kyle Rittenhouse deal, but also with the Amy Cooper. This is a very unpopular stance she's taking. Amy Cooper is supposedly the most racist person around, and, and the idea of even defending her would absolutely rile the left, but she's doing it anyway. Now, when she's talking about the Kyle Rittenhouse case, I think she's talking about the video where she initially claimed that Kyle was chasing Joseph Rosenbaum. Obviously, she got it wrong. How she got it so wrong, I have no idea. I mean, even the left acknowledged early on that, yes, Kyle was being chased, but uh, she had it the other way around. It's really, really strange that she came across that conclusion. But at any rate, she is coming clean on it, and we'll listen some more feel that her behavior was uncalled for, whatever, that's up to you. But you should know all those details. And I will say from my personal opinion, if some random, if I'm alone at a park and some random guy tries to lure my dog away from me, I'm gonna freak out, <laughs> you know, like I just am. And so, okay, with the Rittenhouse story, I was gonna cover the trial and I just needed to go back and just like really, really look at all of the details and remember all the details so when I do the story, I, I get the facts right. And then as I'm doing that, I come across a New York Times video. This was a really, really well done video that they posted on YouTube that showed you in, in slow motion, like how everything transpired that night. Mm -hmm. And once you see it for yourself, it's really, really difficult to argue that in those moments, he was not acting in self-defense. Whoa. Whoa, is this Anna Kasparian? Yes, it is. She says it. It's hard to believe that he was not acting in self-defense. So, yeah. And, of course, she talked about legacy media before. She's right. They won't necessarily put something down that's blatantly wrong, although the Milwaukee Sentinel Journal certainly seemed to do that on occasion. But what they do is they leave out the context. They'll leave things out. They know exactly what they're doing. And 
the whole thing about Amy Cooper, uh, they knew very well that if they released that information about Amy being gen justifiably scared, that that would have colored the narrative away from them. So they edited it out. And right. this is an area where, you know, Jake and I disagree because, you know, if if someone's hitting you over the head with a skateboard, <laughs> that, could kill, that, could kill you, that could kill you, you know? And so, you know, Jake is a very, he's a strong-minded person and he's not one to back down from a fight. So in his mind, you know, if someone confronts you with a skateboard, he, he doesn't see it as a threat, but I, I do. And Rittenhouse is not a big burly guy who can like defend himself um, against someone who's like hitting him over the head with a skateboard as he's lying on his back. Uh, Shank has never been hit by a skateboard. If he ever did, he would probably change his tune. So once I saw all those details, first of all, I had to convey them to my audience and be honest about what the, what the reality was. The other thing was, you know, there was a lot of misreporting about how Kyle Rittenhouse was in possession of an illegal weapon and that he crossed state lines with that <laughs> oh, no. weapon. Okay, yeah. so that was a lie. And it, it was a lie that she forwarded constantly. It was every video she was telling everybody about how he crossed state lines with that weapon. Um, I mean, she's at least admitting that it was wrong. But she also has to own up to the fact that she was one of the big spreaders of that manure. It's not a lie that I just made up in my mind, right? That was how it was reported initially, which is why I would mention the state lines, but not because, oh, how dare he cross state lines. Anyone in this country has the right to cross state lines. It was because it was reported that he was in possession of an illegal gun right. and he traveled across state lines with an illegal gun, which is a serious charge, but it turned out that he did not travel across state lines with that. Yeah, he didn't actually. do that. Yeah, the weapon right. was in, in the area already, yeah. Exactly, he bought it from a friend when he was already in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't buy it from a friend. But it's a complicated deal, so let's not get into it. Sitchin, yes. sit, the night of that event, I mean, maybe a day afterwards, Sitch and I were watching those videos online as they were breaking out. And I saw the reporting w was basically wrong on CNN the night the viral videos were released. Don Lemon was saying, uh, you know, a, a white kid shoots into a crowd of Black Lives Matter protesters. And I'm like, what? Yep. That's insane. Yeah. So they kind of poisoned the narrative from the get-go. Mm. And then... And that's really important to know. Um, and it happened to me when I first heard 17 year old kid shoots into a crowd of protesters. I was like, oh, no. And I actually avoided the uh, the news for a while on that because I just didn't want to hear about it. And finally, I was watching Rick Gore's channel, Good Luck America, when he was covering it. And I'm thinking, wait, this is not at all what I thought. And that's when, at that point, I realized that I had been lied to. And she was lied to as well. All of them were lied to. And mm. everyone just kind of gets caught up in it. it yeah, and that's how misinform misinformation spreads. And I've just, that was a pivotal moment for me. Because, again, I, misinforming the audience is not something I have any interest in. And I might give them the facts and they might not like it, but I can't withhold information from them because I'm afraid that they might not like it. So I'm going to mm -hmm. give them the facts. But, you know, I've learned to be better about, first of all, the, the sources I trust. I make an effort to just be cognizant of the filter bubbles. We all exist in the filter bubbles I exist in. And I wonder if that includes the Young Turks. <laughs> I mean, she says I'm being very careful about who I trust. Well, I wonder if she trusts the Young Turks, her own channel. <laughs> I mean, you certainly can't trust Rashad Ritchie. <laughs> And I've broken through that bubble a little bit to, you know, look at other sources that I typically wouldn't have looked at. And then the other thing that I do now is I just wait. You know, I think the story involving the so-called city by Karen is a good example of that. The main show, because TYT consists of many different shows, right? The show that I'm the executive producer and host of is the main flagship show, The Young Turks. Mm -hmm. And prior to that story breaking, I had a meeting with my team and I was like, listen, I don't want you guys pitching stories about random individuals in the country who are caught in an out of context video, uh, allegedly behaving badly. I, I think these stories are divisive. I don't think we usually have the full details before we talk about these stories. Well, that's pretty much the entire leftist media. <laughs> I mean, if you take that away, Anna, then they won't have anything to report at all because that's essentially what the leftist media does. 
They take a random interaction between two people that normally we wouldn't even care about and they blow it out of proportion. And of course, the context is completely stripped away. It happened with City Bike Karen and it will continue to happen. But I have a feeling that the Young Turks has probably been a little bit problematic in this regard just as much as anybody else. Stories. And honestly, at the end of the day, engaging in these witch hunts is actually causing more division and hate in the country than anything else. So like if there's a story that's particularly like jarring and you guys really do want to cover it, that's fine. But just understand that we are going to wait. Like we are not in the business of breaking news. I don't give a shit about being the first uh, in reporting the story or whatever. I want to make sure that when we do, we actually report it correctly and we don't have egg on our face later. Now, there are a bunch of then you need to fire Rashad Ritchie <laughs> because Rashad will jump on a story immediately and he never gets anything right. Of other shows on the network that I have no say over, that I have no control over who, you know, inaccurately reported on it and uh, had to issue retraction. They had to take videos down and all that stuff. And I just think that was a teachable moment, hopefully a teachable moment for everyone in the company. But certainly, you know, this is an ongoing conversation I have with my team. And luckily, I don't know how I did it. I feel like I found unicorn producers because they're really smart, super open-minded. You know, they're less interested in this left versus right or partisan garbage. And they're more interested in making sure that if we're going to report stories, we get it accurate. Um, and so we're, we're moving slowly but surely in a direction that I think is better, not just for the show, but I think better in terms of like what we add to society. Mm -hmm. Like the last thing I want to do is be the other side of right-wing disinformation, right? Like if we're gonna be critical of disinformation we see happening in various videos and that are produced by other people, we should at least look inward a little bit and make sure that we're doing our due diligence. But it's kind of interesting because Rashad Ritchie got the City Bike Karen completely wrong and he did pull that video down. And then he went back and doubled down on it and that video as far as i know is still up there so as far as i'm concerned the young turks has a video about city bike karen that is false yeah it's you know it's interesting you were saying how uh with the media a lot of the misinformation comes from like they leave stuff out and that's been mm -hmm. my experience too is just this intentional leaving out of key information or they like the headline or the subsection will kind of frame something in a very specific way so even when you get to like kind of the contradictory information, your mind is already like made up by that point. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, and so it leads to this kind of effect where like once a person see like once that story hits that like you or me or anyone, because I kind of went through the same experience, where like once something hits me in a specific way, like it's like I'm oh I'm free of the matrix. Suddenly I'm starting to see like things a little bit differently. All the dominoes kind of start to fall. And I say, oh wait, I start to see like where all the misinformation is coming from. And let me give you an example. If you remember, Thomas Claire Binger once accused the defense of, of claiming that Kyle was excused from his gun charge because he was hunting. And of course, he had it all wrong. Thomas Claire Binger never did understand 948.60. But whatever the case, um, NBC News came in and said that attorneys claimed Kyle was hunting. And of course, you never describe the prosecutor as an attorney. I've never seen that done before. So people thought that it was Kyle's defense team that was making the claim. No, it was Thomas Claire Binger. And the story itself, when you read it, had it more correct, but the headline was completely misleading. And it led a lot of people to think that Kyle was trying to get out of a gun charge by claiming that he was hunting people. Okay, so she's now going to talk about Cenk, um, that dude on the Young Turks. I think he's Iranian. I'm not sure. But whatever, that's who she's referring to in the upcoming snippet. He was going to go... He asked me if, he, if I thought it was a good idea that he was going to go debate Destiny. And I said no. Uh, <laughs> and it's mostly because I just... I see a lot of clickbaity stuff going on in that realm too, like with some of the debate stuff that takes place. But also I asked him like, what are you guys gonna debate? So first he said, oh, we're gonna talk about like the Democratic Party and our disagreements about it. I, I was fine with that. But then he mentioned, he's like, and then we're gonna talk about Rittenhouse. Um, and no! Like, yeah. so, he, so he knew Rittenhouse was gonna come up. Yeah, yeah, they, I think they agreed on the topics ahead of time. Okay, um, wow, okay. And, and you know, he had it, look, I, Jake is his own man. The best I can do is, is share my perspective. And I just told him, I was like, but he was acting in self-defense. <laughs> Look, 
Jenks just has a different perspective. It is what it is. Like, I'm not. I wish I could have been there for that one. I'm here to talk shit about Jenks. You know, like, we, we, and again, I want to give him credit because I can do, we can have the conversation on air, this exact conversation. And he's going to say the exact same thing. I'm going to say my piece. And it's not going to lead to like an uncomfortable relationship with him. It's not going to lead to retaliation. And I really commend him for having an open mind. But to him, he just couldn't. He just disagrees about it being self-defense. He thinks like he didn't need to like shoot the gun, he didn't need right. to kill people. I hear you. I wish I wish it didn't end that way. But if I were in his shoes, yeah. I, I would have done the same thing. Whoa. I mean, and that's causing a lot of problem for people. They're on there. What do you mean she would have done the same thing? She wouldn't have taken the gun to the protest, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I probably would have prayed and sprayed. So, I mean, <laughs> Rittenhouse did the right thing. Like, it's a good thing he was uh, in control of the weapon instead of me. So <laughs> He's absolutely right. Everybody talks about how crazy Kyle was, but um, I don't know. He fired off a certain number of rounds and a very large percentage of them landed. A lot better than what a lot of people would have done. Now, I don't think that Kyle is an awesome gun handler. He got a little lucky maybe, but whatever the case, results don't lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's funny that like, yeah, this gets thrown around a lot. Like people accuse you of grifting or other people of grifting when they start changing their beliefs, even though it's like, like you're changing your beliefs in a way that would like be more likely to hurt your career as a <laughs> style. I know, I like, know. Yeah, it's like insane because you know what, like what so many people on the internet want is they just want you to choose one side very comfortably and to like fit into it and to just say like, these are the hyperbolic talking points. And then if you're like, well, let's add some nuance here, which pisses off your audience more often than not, you're like, well, you're a grifter. You're like, well, who am I grifting to exactly? So, okay, so I'm going to stick up to my audience a little bit because um, to their credit, I think the majority of people in the audience are open-minded and are mm -hmm. open to new information. I think that there is a small but very loud minority in our audience and on the left in general that really give the left a bad name. I think mm -hmm. they're overrepresented on Twitter and they're children. They act like children. I think some of them literally are like minors and they see everything. And look, if they're young, I don't blame them. I think when you are young, it's, it's a little more difficult to grasp nuance and how complicated and complex a lot of these issues are. You know, one of the favorite, one of the things that Jesse Single says all the time that I love, and he says it repeatedly is it's complicated because it is like all of these issues are way more complicated than the way they're being portrayed in partisan media. And so what I wanna do is actually understand those complexities, but here's the other thing understand the other side in good faith, okay? Because I think that there are some stereotypes that the left has kind of bought into about what the arguments are on the other side. And, you know, it doesn't make us sharper to misrepresent what the other side is actually saying. It actually mm -hmm. makes us weaker. If you understand what their arguments are, it'll then allow you to reflect on what your own weaknesses might be in regard to the arguments that you're making. So what do you think? Do you think that she's turned the corner? Keep in mind, she's still a leftist, she's still liberal, but at least I get the feeling that if she was on the jury in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, I truly believe now that she would have rendered a not guilty verdict. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. Like my video, subscribe to my channel. And by the way, if there's any other uh, snippets in here that you want me to cover in a future video, uh, let me know. Just put the timestamp down and I'll cover them. Um, I didn't watch it all the way through, so I don't know if she's going to cover uh, Kyle any more in this, but uh, let me know. And of course, a link will be in the description below. Take care, everybody.